right. To our Fox Biz All-Stars, Veronica Dagger, Mark Serrano, and Tracy Burns. So Tracy is immediate and all to blame for fanning the flames. As it's he just said. like the president on a smaller level. God forbid he take any kind of responsibility or blame for this. And, oh, God, no, it's not the protesters who blocked highways, blocked bridges, l laid down in the middle of stores right. so people couldn't shop. Certainly wasn't them. Certainly wasn't the protesters or the people out there that called the police, you know, the KKK, spat on them. Come on now. Take some responsibility for this. Mark, I'm sensing panic with with the mayor of New York now. That's That's, that's the... The comment when somebody starts pointing fingers in such a he was sh literally shaking when he was answering that that character. That's dangerous right. to have a, a mayor of New York City who's panicking like that. Here's why. Look, I'm the son of a retired NYPD cop. OK, the outrage in the police community is unprecedented. Here's the reason why you have this conflict and why he's pointing blame at the media. He used the media to advance the propaganda of the of the protesters. Now he wants to blame the media for pointing the finger at him. There's outrage in the police community over this. But here's why. A very close colleague of mine is a Democratic elected official. He said, here's why Democrats, far left Democrats, have a hard time governing. Because their ideology is in conflict with their leadership role. And so he's looking to blame right. anybody but himself. That's, what he needs to do well, is take responsibility point. right now. Particularly when now he's when he's in charge of the police. I mean, he's in yes, charge of the exactly. police. He can't be conflicted with the police. Veronica, uh, Tracy alluded to this. How much is President Obama to blame for allowing people like Al Sharpton into the White House, into the Justice Department, essentially, to have influence in picking the next attorney general? You know, that definitely could be part of it. But to go back to the media issue, right. you can't blame the media when they are just doing their job. They are reporting the news. They are... Uh, showing the protesters. They're not putting the words in the mouth of the protesters. It would be wrong for the media not to report it. So yeah. it, it's just not a valid that's so argument. Obvious. I think that's, again, why the guy is panicking, and I think that's a dangerous situation. Meanwhile, the House GOP report is blaming the Obama White House for weaponizing the IRS and turning it against conservatives. Veronica, first of all, you're from the Wall Street Journal, and kudos, because it was the Wall Street Journal that first reported this story, that the IRS was thinking of attacks on conservative groups. Is, is there... Is there a little more media interest now in this story than there was? There could be. Now that the, we, the fact that we reported it, that's a good thing. Hopefully more outlets will pick it and up. We and we should mention this is the news the, side of the journal right, that reported, side, not absolutely. the editorial. Right. And, you know, I think that what this shows, though, the IRS's job, though, is to interpret the tax code. People want that done. The IRS isn't supposed to be this partisan uh, organization. It's supposed to be non-political. Right. And to add this political element for it, that's not what Americans well, want. Well, Mark, it's against the law. It's literally against law. After Nick Nixon did that, used the IRS for political purposes. Uh, Congress changed the law. It was actually one of the articles of impeachment against right. Richard Nixon. Of right. course, he was never impeached, but he, he they would have used that as a charge against him to impeach him. This report makes Nixon look like a saint. Think of these terms, a culture of bias, a weaponization of the, IR, weaponization right. of the IRS. This is a damning report, and the media is uh, delinquent for not covering it, not using this as a tool in their reporting. Because if you think about it, the White House, they, they lay out a timeline. Here's when the president talked about groups, conservative groups. Here's where IRS officials talked about fixing the problem with conservative groups. They lay out a timeline that's not being reported. And, of course, reported. the timeline was, Tracy, right before the president's reelection. I mean, it's clear they wanted to clear the decks of these conservative groups before the president's reelection. And of course, that's exactly what happened. I'm wondering, by the way, if these these reports, these IRS reports, led to the Republicans' win in the last election, the midterms. I, I mean, I can't answer that. But what I know is what David French said, and he's dead on, is that this is complicated tax code. That's part of the problem, too, right. because this is gift tax, estate tax, you know, 501c4 uh, exempt companies, everything all rolled into one. The media doesn't necessarily understand it. Spoken so, uh, like a real accountant, but, by the way. Tracy's the only one who does understand it. it. But unfortunately, I mean, even reading it, it's murky. Like, and yeah. really, yeah, like, there's confusing. nothing in the law that says you should or should not. It's interpretation. That's probably why the media backed away from this. David, even though basically all of us here are discouraged that the media is not more interested in this story, I think it played a role in the last election, the midterms in November, don't you? Any question amongst the conservative base, this issue has made them very angry for a very long time and for very good reason. I mean, this was, as the report indicates, the weaponization of the IRS. And I think in the most recent midterms, 
that's one of the reasons why you saw the base come out so strong as a symbol that they will not be intimidated, that the IRS cannot, in fact, suppress an entire political movement. Tracy, do you think it gives any oomph to the to the idea of changing our tax code to simplify, to get to a, a flat tax or something like well, that? Well, if this doesn't, I don't know what does, because this is so complicated, so squishy. I mean, the, the code is a book of political favors. It should be abolished, and the only way to do it is to start over. But what will happen is, now the GOP will take over, they're going to take this report, and they're going to put together a package of reforms of the IRS. Which is more the, layers. The, the IRS will have to it's be overseen by a bipartisan commission, right? right? Because the, they've got to deal with this, and if the president vetoes it, then he'll be, you know, taking, he'll of course, have to You know, the definition of a camel is a horse put together by a commission, <laughs> so I, I don't know if they'll really end up simplifying it But they've it got to all. do something right. when they take over Congress. Let's hope.